We watched the Atlanta Hawks, even the series with the Philadelphia 76ers. Joel Embiid has a uh, just history-defining bad second half to even that series up. And then we saw the Clippers. Uh, let's, let's talk about the Hawks first. Did they figure out something, or is this just going to be a brutal battle for them to try to win games and, and get through this series? Yeah, that, that was impressive for them because if you look at Bogdanovich and um, Trey Young, they did not have a great scoring uh, game. In fact, I think the two of them were a combined 17 of 50. So they didn't shoot well. So I know that Embiid didn't shoot well, but Atlanta didn't shoot well. They were down 18, rallied and came back. Trey Young has been the breakout star of the playoffs. I don't think there's any question about it. And for Embiid, everyone knows that he's carrying that knee injury, but he did go over for 12 in the second half. And it was, uh, you know, just under 10 seconds ago when he missed that layup. You know, for a guy of his caliber, you have to be able to finish around the rim. I get it. You know, if, it's, if he's struggling a little bit, he can't elevate, whatever whatever the case may be. You st- it's a layup. You, you have to be able to convert that. And that's big for, you know, that's a tough, tough loss for Philadelphia. And also the same thing now. You know, you're playing every other day. It's not going to be easy for Philadelphia because now they know they're going back to Atlanta. Atlanta's been one of the more, you know, young and exciting teams all season in the NBA, and they've been playing at a different level. You know, without Danny Green there, and if Embiid is you know, going to continue to struggle, I give Atlanta a pretty good chance to win two out of the last three games. All right. Well, uh, I'm excited, looking forward to that. And then out here in L.A., we, you know, what are we, what are we to think of the Los Angeles Clippers? They absolutely like they don't belong in the first two games of the initial series with Dallas. They don't look like they belong in the first two games against the Utah Jazz. And then last night, at one point, I looked at the ticker, and they're up 40-17. to 17. So did they figure something out? Or is this just going to be a game-to-game scenario where we don't know what the Clippers are actually going to bring to the table? I know. As soon as you want to buy into them, then they'll end up disappointing you in Game 5. You know, Utah's still in control from that standpoint. They have the two home games. But, you know, when you look at the Clippers, they do have a lot of experience. Kawhi's been a two-time Finals MVP. Paul George has been in big games, you know, wherever he's been. I also think the key to that team, it seems like whenever Marcus Morris is knocking down shots, that seems to change everything. So both Paul George and Kawhi at 31 last night, but I believe Marcus Morris at 24 and he hit five three-pointers. That always seems to be a big difference. And, yes, you know, Donovan Mitchell keeps scoring a lot, but he's also taking a ton of shots. So they've kind of figured things out in terms of making things difficult for Donovan Mitchell. And the Clippers, the Clippers have more talent. I know, like, their regular season – wasn't great, and they looked like they were on the verge of getting knocked out. But the way they're going now, I would not be shocked if you see them in the NBA Finals. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.